Hey fellas, welcome back to another exciting project here at Prime Model Works headquarters. What I'm doing this time is a 148 scale Tamiya F14A Tomcat. However, for those of you that uh, aren't familiar with my channel, haven't been watching me very long, you might be surprised to find out that I'm just a big nerd. And uh, I've got every G.I. Joe action figure from 1982 to 1986, and they're all complete. They're not in their package, though. So, eh, oh well. But anyway, since I'm a big G.I. Joe fan, I was digging through my storage area the other day, and I got them out, and uh, ran across the Sky Striker right here, which is based off the F-14 Tomcat. So, I thought, why don't I just... Uh, paint a more realistic 148 scale Sky Striker. So that's what we're doing. Uh, I may eventually uh, try to build the Cobra Rattler. I've got a few A10 kits, and if you're not familiar with the Cobra Rattler, it looks like an A10, but the, it's got an extra engine, and it's it's just kind of different. And I thought maybe I might try that too. But anyway, uh, for for those of you that aren't really interested in GI Joe stuff. Uh, you know, I think you still get something out of this. And in and, and a lot of my videos, I try to include different tips and tricks. And it's not the only way to do it. It's just the way that I choose to do things. And I've painted a few F-14s. And uh, this is showing you basically how I how I paint those and how I get some of the paint effects on, my, on, uh, on that specific model. So well, let's take a look. Oh, one other thing I, I wanted to talk about. Um, I haven't posted a video in a little bit, but I finally painted this MAK kit that has been hanging around my workshop here. I had it in primer, and I thought, you know what, I'll paint it up. And I uh, experimented with some snow effects, and I used some baking soda and white glue, and, uh, and then I ended up buying some AK Interactive snow effects and throwing that on there. I also made some icicles with super glue, which I think looks kind of cool. But either way, I'll uh, I'll show you pictures of this at the end as well. So uh, this will be a two-part series, and uh, most of the painting, it's been a few days of just painting the heck out of it and masking and painting. So uh, this one and then the next one, it should be all done, and you can take a look at the finished one on the next video. Oh. All right, one of the nice things about this kit is that the wings can be painted separately and they fit on these little stubs just like so and that comes in real handy when painting the Tomcat because they do move so that's always a plus if you're looking to get this kit that is one of my favorite things about it it's easy to paint well what I've got mixed up here is some camo gray and I've got it really lightened and I thinned it down a lot just kind of by eye and I'm just gonna put my use this for my marbling layer I'm just gonna come along here and make squiggly lines
Okay, so that's kind of what I'm going for right there. I may come back and uh, adjust it a little bit more. I'll let that dry and then we'll see what it looks like. I'll start on the back and I'll get the rest of the plane painted in this base coat. So do my marbling layer and then uh, overcoat it with the base color. And we'll come back and we'll do some masking and uh, painting some of the decals or logos. All right, now I've got the base coat on it. However, it's a little too blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alter the color a little bit with some of this light gold gray. But it's gonna go on really thin. And But before I do that, I'm gonna do use the salt technique. So basically I'm just masking off some of this bluer type color with some salt and water. And I add a little bit of dish soap in my water to break up the water tension because if you don't it just tends to to pool up so I'm just gonna hit some of the upper surfaces with this just spread on the water get some of this stuff on the top And this can get messy. And I don't use it often, but it does give you a nice, a really cool effect. Now you can come, come back and use just like a lighter, darker shade. Whatever you think's appropriate. It doesn't have to be a different color, but I'm gonna try it with this different shade of gray. And I'm just going to take some regular salt. A lot of people like to use uh, rock salt, but I like this. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on here. A little heavier in some areas. And I'll do the same thing, and I'm just going to do this on the upper surfaces. So I've got the upper wing here. And all right. And I'll do that with the rest of the. Uh, upper surfaces, once that dries, then I'm going to come over with my light gold gray and mist that on, kind of alter the color, and then we'll come back and just take some water and rinse this off and see what it looks like. Okay, the salt has had a chance to dry, so now I'm going to take my light gold gray and I'm just going to go over this and just kind of change the tone of my my gray. I've got this thinned down a lot. So I'm just changing the tone. This may cover up a little bit more than I want of my pre-shading. Okay. Now, let's take a brush and kind of brush some of this off, show you what we got. Okay, now I got some water. 
And I'm just gonna wet this. Okay. We can brush this off. Get a little bit more water. paper towel wipe that salt off and that is what you get and it gives it kind of that real nice weathered weathered paint like it's been in the uh, on an aircraft carrier for a while so I'll get to you uh, doing the rest of these and then I should be ready to start masking and painting my G.I. Joe stuff on here. Be back in a sec. Okay, masking this thing is gonna be a real pain in the butt, fellas. I think what I'm gonna do, let me take a look here. Now the G.I. Joe on this is in black. I don't know whether to do it in black or white. Hmm. So I don't know. I think I'm probably going to do it in white just because I think that looks better than the black. It's not going to be accurate, but I'm going to take some artistic liberties here. So I'm going to go ahead and spray the white, and then I've got the red circle back here that I'm going to spray. Then I'll come back with my eagle, put my eagle on there, spray my black, and um, probably paint the nose, and then uh, see where I need to go from there. I know there's a lot more masking that I need to do up along the top and along the wing, but um, this is going to be my most difficult part right here. So I'm going to get this out of the way and uh, see you in a minute. All right. Hey, fellas. To interrupt your regular scheduled program, I am... I like to paint my slime lights. Now, the kits usually give you decals, but I don't know. They just don't do it for me. And this is a big pain in the butt. But to be honest with you, masking off everything on this plane is a big pain in the butt. <laughs> I spent all day masking and painting the G.I. Joe and uh, the uh, tail emblem there. And then I masked off right along the intakes. And, uh, you know, that took me <laughs> probably an hour and a half just to do that to get it right. So, you know, in the big scheme of things, this isn't that big a deal, but basically I just cut small strips and mask off my slime lights. And then I'll pick a, not really a yellow, but I'll pick, I've got some of this uh, Vallejo stuff. Where is it? Uh, even though it's green, it's, um, I don't know, some kind of green. Green, gray, green, gray. And I'll mix that with a little bit of yellow and paint my slime lights and it looks really cool. So that's probably what I'll use for these. But basically it's just cutting off strips and masking. But, uh, and on the F-14 there are a lot of these. And this is where my Infini cutting mat really comes in handy because I can cut these small strips and uh, all the same size and I couldn't imagine doing this uh, this uh, red these red markings along the intakes without this infinity cutting mat so I'm gonna get to uh, masking these off get my slime lights painted I got some to do on the wings and then we'll come along and we'll do the little walkway uh, non-slip skid surface and I'll, I'll show you how I do that okay fellas now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make the non-skid surface along the walkways on top of the intakes 
And what I'm using is Mr. Surfacer 1000, and I know my lighting's off, but yeah, I've been having lighting issues, so just bear with me. But I use this and a sponge, and it creates like a textured surface. And my bottle is kind of frozen. There we go. So basically, I'll just take my sponge, and it's kind of cut irregular. Let me get a post-it note here to dab some of this stuff off. You kind of want to be careful. And I've masked off the area to give me a nice demarcation line. So basically, I'll just dip my Mr. Servicer in here. And you don't want to get too much. You just go along and sponge this down. And you can use Mr. Surfacer 500, but this, uh, this will suffice for what we're doing. And this dries really quick. So what happens is, is if you keep tapping this down, and eventually it'll start pulling off sponge, so you kinda gotta be careful. But this gives you a nice little textured area for your non-skid surface. And as it dries, you can kind of raise up those little humps and bumps. Turn it around. And then you can come back with a sponge and I usually just sponge paint this. I don't typically paint this with an airbrush. And I'll come back with different colors, some browns, some grays, some NATO blacks, and uh, sponge in my color. And you don't have to actually fill in, cover all this gray that we put down. Kind of see how the light hits off of it but it gives you a nice little textured area and yeah that'll be pretty good I may add a little bit more over here on this side it's best if you don't put this on too thick it takes it to uh, it'll really get away from you and you kind of make it look a little out of scale if you get like a big big bumps in it yikes a little too much All right, now I'll just come back, do the same thing with my colors, and I will have my walkway done. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna create some staining, and I'm masking off a couple of areas with the uh, Mr. Masking Solution. And once that dries, then I'll come back with some X-19, some smoke, and I'll spray it over top, and it's going to give it like a really cool stained effect. Uh, this is something you don't really want to go overboard on. Just a couple little spots, I think, uh, looks really good. So once this dries, we'll come back. I'll spray it, lift it up, and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've got my smoke set up. Smoke set up. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Anyway, I've got smoke in here. I've got it mixed 50-50 with some isopropyl alcohol. And basically, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to build up and just kind of spray right on top of this. Maybe go out a little bit.
And I use isopropyl alcohol because it dries really quick and it's less likely to uh, spider out. And I can kind of stay on this one spot. Okay. Do the same thing for this one. And then you get something that looks like so. Yeah, just kind of a, a neat little thing. And I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of it. Like on here. I'll just do the same thing along here. Peel that up. And then uh, I should be ready to put a clear coat on it. And throw some uh, generic decals on there. And... Uh, this will probably be the last part of this video. I'll, uh, I'll show you some pictures of it before I get clear coat on it. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one. And it should be done by then. Thanks, fellas.